screen addiction. How many of you here are addicted to your screens? Well, let's see. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Or when you're in the car to go to work? Or right before you sleep? Well, I can say I'm on my screen for all of those times. A study made by the American Academy of Children Adolescent Psychiatry states that children from 8 to 12 years old from the U.S. spend an average of four to six hours daily on their screens. And adolescents of 13 to 14 years spend a shocking nine hours daily on their screens. No time to go outside, play with your friends, or even do your homework. Or even do your homework. Let's put these numbers in a real life situation. Let's say you wake up at 6.30 a.m., go to school at 8.30, and finish at 4 p.m. And you're expected to sleep at least eight hours, at least eight hours, meaning from 10.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. That gives an average adolescent about eight hours of free time per day. And with these numbers, and with the screen time average they have every day, their life consists of waking up, screening for two hours, going to school, screening for another two hours just to come home to screen for four more hours before going to sleep. You may not have noticed, but this is probably how most of our lives look like, including mine. But why? Why are we so addicted to screens? Well, a study from the Journal of the American Medical Association states that when we pick up our phone, we get this instant feel of gratification from a happy chemical called dopamine. This chemical gets sent to our brain, and we feel instantly better within the moments of picking up your phone. But why? And honestly, it's almost inevitable in a sense to be addicted to your screen. Think about it. We use our phones every single day. We depend on our screen especially living in China, where almost everything is paid through the phone. And remember COVID, when we couldn't even step outside without showing our green codes that we were healthy, which is on our phone. But why am I talking about screen addiction? Well, it's because to, I am addicted to screens. And today, I want to tell you about my journey through this addiction. I started watching YouTube videos and movies when I turned 11 years old. I got addicted to Netflix. I knew almost every single movie and series Netflix had, and my family used Netflix as an adjective to describe me. But that was only the start. When I turned 13, I left the tween phase and was introduced to adolescence. I moved to a new school, downloaded many new apps that I thought would make me look cool, and that's when I really got addicted. But my age is not the only reason why I got addicted to screens. Did you know in my family, my mom has four screens, my dad has three, and my sister and I have two each. Let's do some quick math. That makes in total 11 screens present in my house. How was I not supposed to be addicted to screens? I was doomed since the very beginning. Now let's talk about my new school. As many of you may know, the IB curriculum encourages a lot of critical thinking and research, which my old school didn't provide. This is, of course, very good for students to be able to expand their knowledge and know more about the world. However, it did need the, ex the use of extensive screening. I was hit with a wave of technology when I turned 13. And of course, my peers were also introduced to teenage life. So we all started influencing one another on social media, started arguments online, and started posting stuff online that shouldn't be posted just for the sake of it. This led me to be self-conscious, and I mean very self-conscious. I started being very negative, got myself into a lot of unneeded drama, and, well, I lost myself in a sense. I started distancing myself from my family, and to get away from my problems, I went into even more screening, which is ironic because my problems were caused by that very same phone. I got mad at my family for no reason, and the amount of online socializing I did completely replaced the amount of offline socializing I did, which was very little in the first place. But in December, as I was scrolling through the endless videos, 
I stopped on one video which suggested that stopping my, limiting my screen time would improve my life. And who doesn't want to improve their life? So this started a new stage of my life. Experimenting with ways to reduce my screen time, I decided that I'm going to finally get over this addiction. Now I'm going to show you the different attempts I did to try to get rid of this addiction. Attempt number one, being that girl. Many of you may be wondering, who is? What is that girl? Well, the Urban Dictionary defines that girl as a girl that gets up at 5 a.m., meditates, drinks smoothies, has showers every day, journals, eats healthy food, goes to the gym, and is successful in many ways. My definition of that girl is the dream person you want to be. As the dictionary states, someone who is successful in many ways and cares for themselves. So I told myself, I'm going to be that girl. I'm going to get over this addiction by being that girl. I started off with getting up every day at 5 a.m. That failed miserably. I would simply just turn off my alarm and go right back to sleep. I even went to the extent of moving my alarm to a completely different room so that I would be forced to get out of bed. But I just completely missed the alarm. Next, I tried an overly complicated skincare routine. That just left me with a slimy face for the rest of the day. And eating healthy foods? No way. Snacking is my identity. I quickly realized that being that girl consisted of way too many goals I still needed to achieve. As you can see, this is that girl, and um, here's this girl. <laughs> so I realized that I still need to achieve a lot of goals to be able to get rid of my screen addiction. And I made this my attempt number two, working out. I decided that if I work out, I would slowly start not even thinking about screening. I even did some research. According to the National Library of Medicine, those with an excessive amount of screen time show lack of physical activity and low signs of motivation. So I decided if I did more physical activity, that would surely minus my screen time. And so it did work for the first couple of days. I started going outside for walks and jogs, and it felt so refreshing. But little by little, I started getting tired. And while jogging, all I could think of was Netflix, my bag of chips, and my butt on the couch. And that just led me right back to my screen. And guess what I did after my workout? I went right back to my screen. So this led me with a new conclusion. I had no motivation. I had no motivation to continue my workout or to read a book or study. And this leads me to my attempt number three of getting rid of this addiction, changing my room setup. I thought that make it my dream room. I thought that if I did not have enough motivation, maybe this could be my motivation. After all, who doesn't want to study in their dream room? So I did it. I searched inspiration on Pinterest and YouTube and set myself up with my very own Taobao account. I used all my pocket money on completely transforming my room spaces. I made my office very studious with decorations and book stands to make me look smart. And I made my bedroom a meditation zone with full of fluff. I even downloaded a meditation app to go with it. This was very successful in the first two to three weeks. Instead of coming after school, instead of going right to my couch, I went right to my room and started studying and doing my homework. However, little by little, I started giving me those excuses that I'm sure many of you may have encountered. They went like this. Alex, you can do this tomorrow after school. You have nothing then. And this just led me right back to my screen. And I found a new conclusion, that I had way too much time on my hands. And this leads me to my fourth and final attempt of finally getting rid of this addiction, getting busy. I thought that I, if I could fill my entire week up with a bunch of activities, then I won't even have time to think about screening. So I did it. 
I signed up for soccer on Thursdays and cross country on Tuesdays, and I even got myself a job, which took up Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. And let's not forget this very TEDx, which is actually part of me keeping busy. And I bet many of you are wondering, did I even get rid of this addiction? Was I successful? And there's a very simple answer to that. Not yet. <laughs> After all, Rome wasn't built in a day. Thank you. <laughs>